I welcome. A few months have passed since the Great Phoenix overhaul, and I'm still seeing quite a number of posts on different platforms asking which version is the best. So in an effort to answer, or help you to answer the question, here are some performance numbers for the different combinations of missile and rocket motor. I've already said a lot about the missile, describing the issues of the M54, the kind of parameters it loves, and how to squeeze a bit more performance in other videos I've made in the past, and you can find them linked in the description. Therefore today I will not repeat myself too much and go straight to the point. In premise, let's understand the different variants. The F-54A was introduced with a Tomcat in 1974, but its genesis is much older, and the first tests go back to the mid-60s. Yep, it is that old, and in fact, it is rather a stupid missile, so to speak, much closer to a big M7 Sparrow than a modern A120 Amram. The F-54C was a later variant, introduced in 1986, but it is light years ahead in terms of technology. It shows the full advantages of the digital era, and it is a very dangerous weapon across all sorts of targets. The only minor disadvantage is the increasing weight, which impacted the bait very marginally, its pure kinematic performance. Both missiles come with two different rocket motors, the Mark 47 and Mark 60. Simply put, the first burns longer, the second for a shorter period, but with greater intensity. This is reflected in their performance, who we see in a moment, but also in their trajectory. No matter the combination of missile and rocket motor, all versions of the M54 Phoenix love geometry, as usual, the most important factor. Altitude, very close to the geometry in terms of importance, especially as the range increases. And speed, but to a slight lesser degree. Even if these three key factors are satisfied, long range implies longer time of flight, which in turn increases the odds of the target modifying uncontrollable parameters of the geometry thus kinetically defeating the missile. If this fundamental point is not clear, consider how many opportunities you have to kinematically defeat a missile if you have a couple of minutes at your disposal, versus kinematically defeating an AIM-9X, for example, which is within a few seconds. To achieve its remarkable long-range capability, the Phoenix uses a simple strategy. It tries to get as high as possible in the shortest time possible. Then it cruises and a moderated speed around Mach 2, Mach 2.5, and eventually it dives onto the target from high altitude. In this final phase, it sometimes accelerates, depending on a number of factors. This is why altitude is important. The higher the launching platform is, the shorter the time the Phoenix spends in the denser part of the atmosphere. This is another reason why manual lofting helps the Phoenix, as its initial trajectory is already thrusting it upwards, as discussed in the two videos I mentioned before. So this scenario we're using sees the Tomcat flying at 35,000 feet at Mach 0.9 and the target Qualt flying at Mach 0.8. Let's now try to figure out which version of the Phoenix is the best, if there is one. The first parameter is the speed at which the missile impacts its target. In theory, the higher, the better, as a faster missile has more energy to deal with last second maneuvers and offers shorter windows to react. The charts show speed versus distance. The angles represent the manual loft sweet spots, but as we know, there are some caveats. So we can see immediately how the missiles appear to follow a pattern dictated by the rocket motors. The C versions are heavier, and seem to have a negative offset compared to the A. More can be said about this aspect, but in the interest of shortening the discussion, we can say that the rocket motor is the greater discriminant performance-wise. In fact, going forward, I will skip the discussion about the A versus C, to focus on Mark 47 versus Mark 60. The impact of manual loft is tangible, especially at 20 nautical miles, which is a critical range as we know, but helps across the whole sets of ranges. Away from that, we can see how the Mark 47 and Mark 60 show no clear winner. In premise, they are quite comparable, but the Mark 47 seems more performing at shorter range, at the Mark 60 and longer. This is possibly due to the fact that trajectories are different, and the Mark 60 propels the Phoenix at higher altitude somewhat faster. A short range is that the apex altitude is lower, so the longer burn of the Mark 47 helps more. The following is another means of visualizing the impact of speed, using a tool released a few months ago. The parameters are different and the target is almost static in the air, resulting in a very low V sub C, with concrete effects, especially at low altitude. Compared to the previous scenario, this chart shows different altitudes, providing us more aspects to consider in our discussion. In premise, we can see how the Mark 60 dominates in terms of peak speed. More details about this later, but at a lower altitude, it pays the price of a shorter rocket motor burn time. 
There are other parameters we can consider to understand how different versions work. They are a bit less interesting, in a sense, than the speed and impact, so I will go quite fast. Feel free to pause the video to better see the charts. The separation at impact is important to have a general understanding of the distance at which the Tomcat can turn cold. As we can see from these charts, showing distance versus employment range, the results are quite consistent in each set, and the higher the value the better. Observing the differences as a percentage of the employment range, it is even more interesting, because we can see that the consistency besides the particular case of 20 nautical miles, it is applicable between 25 nautical miles and 18 nautical miles, with results floating between 38% and 42%. Obviously, the results are affected by the geometry, so cranking and the speed of both aeroplanes and so on play a critical role. The apex is another interesting parameter and helps to explain why manual lofting helps to achieve greater impact speed. Since the missile is facilitated in its climb, not only it has more energy in the climb, but the whole trajectory is affected. Eventually, the energy invested into altitude will be cashed in later in the dive. The peak speed serves to describe the trajectory as well, and missile climbing steeply we reached high altitude earlier with greater benefits in the end game. The 20 nautical miles shows how, all things considered, the M54 Phoenix is not a slow missile considering its age, when its direct alternative, the M7 Sparrow, reaches a top speed almost a max lower. We now abandon the A version of the Phoenix. As we've noticed, the greatest parameter is the rocket motor. In case you are flying in a pre-mid 80s scenario, and therefore you are using the M54A, just consider that your missile is slightly faster than the C version, but the behavior is still quite consistent across the envelope. The following scenario sees the target flying 20,000 feet lower than the Tomcat at around 15,000 feet. This is not a rare scenario, as the Tomcat loves to fly high, but the possible target may prefer hugging the trees. So let's start with the speed and impact. This chart shows the effect of this non-irrelevant altitude difference. The solid line marks the performance of both Mark 47 and Mark 60 employed without manual loft. The dotted line shows the performance against low flying target, whilst the alternate dash dot line shows the results of manual loft against low flying targets. The difference is quite impressive, and it seems that the Mark 60 has a minor advantage in the situation, but only as the range increases beyond 30 35 nautical miles with no manual loft. I am also wondering why a missile so heavy, diving almost vertically and without maneuvering, loses so much energy, but I'm not qualified to give a proper answer. Since the attitude of the target affects the trajectory, the other parameters we are discussing change as well. The separation at impact is visibly affected at short range, especially with manual loft. The peak altitude is quite odd, all things considered. The trajectory looks very close to the core altitude, and after circa 30 nautical miles, the difference is almost constant in the order of 5,000 feet, even if the target is flying 20,000 feet lower. And I'm skipping the peak speed, as it's the least interesting parameter. Let's move on and discuss what happens when the target is not 0TA, 0TA, but rather 20TA, 20TA with negligible drift therefore quite close to collision. The speed and impact does not seem to be affected. The reason may be that the angles are not perfect, but having the target close to collision, albeit not on lead collision, allows the Phoenix to have a relatively smooth journey and a beautiful explosive arrival. The separation at impact cannot really be compared to the previous results, since the closure rate is lower. I've added them anyway to better observe the trend. I have made many videos about manual loft. A simple trick boosts any missile, even allowing the M20C5 to outperform the Phoenix at 50 nautical miles in good conditions. Back to our M54 Phoenix, the 30 degrees and 25 degrees for the Mark 47 and Mark 60 respectively are the sweet spots, although they create potential issues against maneuvering targets as I demonstrated in the videos I keep mentioning. Therefore, you may want to limit yourself to 10 degrees or 15 degrees. Even such minor numbers in fact provide tangible effects. Let's have a look at the results. 
against quality two targets, the Phoenix A shows a good increase performance wise, and the average gain overall is 5.8%. The Phoenix E instead gains even more on average, reaching 6.3%. This is probably due to the fact that the C version is heavier, and the sooner it reaches high altitude, the better. Against low flying targets, the gain is even more relevant, 7.1%. As we have discussed, the Apex versus low flying targets is lower, by manually lofting the missile we force the Phoenix to fly a bit higher. So, as we've seen, even something as little as 10 degrees helps to improve the performance of the missile. But this is not the real key point here. Even if you don't care about mana loft, be very, very careful when employing a missile. If a minor pitch up tangibly helps, what happens with a minor pitch down? So, hypothesis. What if the Phoenix works better at short range if a minor negative pitch is applied? To verify this, I have tested in a theoretically good scenario which is against a lower flying target. The first chart shows the CE Mark 47 and the values are plus and minus 10 degrees of loft. The reference value is the speed at impact from level flight. The Mark 60 does not invert the trend. The separation instead is improved, but by a meager 2%. I guess we can say the negative pitch is pretty bad, so pay particular attention to your Tomcat whenever you're employing a missile. Let me reiterate again, the Tomcat is an old and masterfully portrayed fighter. It needs much more care than any other module to perform at best. Therefore, little details such as avoiding negative pitch must be taken very seriously. And we are finally arrived at the conclusions. We have seen multiple scenarios and employment parameters, so which Phoenix is better? The answer is it depends. A vs C is not really up to debate, and depends on the mission settings. The advantages of the C version, despite its current issues related to DCS, such as the inability to reacquire the target, make it the preferable version. The A version is not necessarily bad, of course, especially in STT and considering the problems of DCS I mentioned above. The rocket motor is the factor that more tangibly separates the two versions. However, contrary to the first iteration of 2019, we do not have a version that really shines. Different deployment scenarios and ranges affect the missile in different ways. At very short range, within 6, 10, 90 miles, depending on the altitude, the Mark 60 drastically wins. It burns faster, but is also the brightest. However, past the initial burst, the endurance of the Mark 47, with its long lasting 30 seconds burn time, makes it superior. This also means that the Mark 47 performs better at lower altitude or against maneuvering targets, as the missile is lower but it also keeps going for an incredible amount of time. Therefore, between 6 10 nautical miles and the critical threshold of 20 nautical miles, the Mark 47 performs better, sometimes even drastically, than the Mark 60. It is around 30 nautical miles that the new shift of course and the Mark 60 starts to perform better again, and the margin widens as the range increases. But this is not all if the target is flying lower than the Tomcat, as may sometimes happen, since the F-14 and the Phoenix love to fly high, then the Mark 60 seems to be the best choice, probably because its trajectory is different, and reaches higher altitude. When we add manual love to the equation, everything changes again, and both missiles become almost identical in terms of performance. The advantage of the Mark 60 in terms of climb rate in fact is almost annulled by the manual loft, and the Mark 47 often performs better due to its endurance. Adding manual loft and using the sweet spots, we find that the Mark 47 performs better between 6 10 nautical miles until 40 nautical miles than its Mark 60 territory. Only at about 80 nautical miles, the Mark 47 wins again. If instead we want to be conservative, opting for a loft angle between 10 and 20 degrees, then the Mark 60 is preferable between 35 and 70 nautical miles. If you're confused, don't worry, it is a confusing topic, and that's probably why people have so many different opinions and vastly different results. So, different intervals, different values. How do we use what we have discussed so far? A simple solution is trying to fit our employment mechanics into the intervals we can use best. For example, a BVR timeline having a first launch at 16 nautical miles should enable a second shot between 25 and 30 nautical miles. 
the Mark 60 seems to have an advantage on the first employment, but the Mark 47 has it for the second. Since the first shot is easier to trash due to the intrinsic nature of a long range shot, we can opt for the Mark 47 for example. Again, this is just uh, an example, and at the end of the day the difference between the two rocket motors is marginal. It all comes down to how much you want to squeeze from your missile. Before wrapping this up, there are additional parameters you may want to consider, such as the smokeless motor. This is a variable that matters probably only against new players as the AI does not seem to care, and because it is so basic that it does not use any preemptive defense anyway, and to expert players is more of a confirmation of a situation as they should be acting against low range shot capable fighter anyway. As usual, if you have questions or feedback, feel free to comment below. Thanks for watching and take care.